Are we going? Technical difficulty. That's all right. We're good. Yes. Well, we welcome you and those who are listening to us. Uh, this is Midway Baptist, and uh, we're thankful to be here. We've got a good crew, almost a house full, and we're thankful for that. And uh, each one of you who comes and is faithful, and uh, believe it or not, I really miss you when you're not in your spot. Uh, we're good, faithful Baptists. We got a spot. <laughs> And so uh, we welcome you who are here, uh, brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. So let's go to our Lord. We thank you, Lord, for this gathering. We thank you for each one of them. Yes. Lord, we've just been through Thanksgiving, and we know it's not the football games, it's not the food. But we know it's family, friends, and those who we love. Yes. And Lord, truthfully, as Christians, uh, we should be thankful all the time. Mm -hmm. We're glad for this church, Lord, that has a, I believe, uh, uh, it's an older group, but uh, with a real heart like the Bereans uh, we read in the Bible who want to study and see what the scripture says. Mm -hmm. And so Lord, uh, we appreciate each one who's here. We appreciate everyone who's watching that'll see this maybe tonight, this Wednesday night, or may see it years from now uh, on YouTube. We ask Lord that something said may speak to their heart that what we say will be able to be used by the holy spirit as long as he wants to use it and lord we pray tonight for each one of us that the spirit of god would work in us that those who are here may hear your word it may touch their hearts and that lord through me the spirit might speak that we might be useful to the kingdom. So Lord, bless your word, and cause it to bring back thoughts and memory of this study. And Lord, how we should have the armor of God on each day. And I believe particularly in these last days, Lord, where we see evil seemingly ever worse where we see our country that a few years ago they'd asked a question on something christian and it might be 70 80 85 percent and today 30 percent believe it yes. and lord unfortunately that's meant many times among christians and so lord if it could be, we ask for one more awakening, yes. one more great revival. Yes. But Lord, we know if not, we're, we're ready to go. We hope that all who hear this, those who are here, we might hear well done, yes. good and faithful servant. So Lord, bless us tonight. Bless this fellowship. And we pray, Lord, that because of it, we may love each other more and serve you better. In Christ's name, amen. 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 Well, somebody who's tuning in and looking uh, at the page behind me on the wall may wonder what in the kind of reckoning that is 24-7. Uh, well... Uh, that's not the day and how long it is and how many days in a week. But uh, we have a study we've been on uh, that uh, started about eight weeks ago where we gave all seven of the pieces 
that, uh, that uh, we see in the armor of God. Now, I know many think there are six, but uh, I believe the Spirit of God spoke to me very early in ministry as I studied this. And uh, I'm always looking for sevens in the Bible because I want God's number. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, John found it in the book of Revelation, didn't he? Yes. Uh, also in his gospel. Yeah. If you read it, there it's built a lot on sevens. Yeah. And so uh, as uh, uh, I searched and God laid my heart, and we're going to go over them quickly tonight and finish this up. Uh, next week, uh, Wednesday, I'll be gone. And... Uh, uh, be away with my wife for a week. We've had to cancel those uh, times away that uh, we have. And any of you that know that have any kind of timeshare or anything, that uh, when you don't go, you don't get it next year. You just lose it. And so uh, we know that uh, we're going to get a chance, hopefully, be away and enjoy uh, each other and. Uh, a little different scenery, and I think we all need that at times. Uh, uh, whether it's a refreshing, I have a sister-in-law that uh, I'm not sure when her and her husband go on vacation, there's any refreshing. Uh, she can find more things to do, and uh, and I love her. Uh, she's the most positive person I have ever met. Uh, we drove one day, we were heading up to uh, Peggy's Cove and driving uh, up through there and driving through six or eight miles of pine trees. You know, uh, uh, so, you know, we stopped for a moment. She hops out of the car and big smile runs back. And, uh, you know, those drizzly rainy days where there's just trees, <laughs> just green trees. And, but she pops over to my wife's window. It's just, isn't this wonderful? <laughs> and we both said, what is wrong with you? <laughs> but, you know, it's good that some people are positive, right? Yeah. We've got enough negative in this world. And, as I said, I always love her. She she goes somewhere and she'll do something right up to the plane flight almost. So, but uh, tonight as we study, I want us to uh, take a look uh, as we look here that uh, we uh, 24-7 that we started out with what the belt of truth and we realized that uh, Paul I believe was taking uh, what he was around every day remember he was guarded uh, wherever he went it seemed by a guard and uh, most of the prisons of that day since the Roman Empire owned all the world around the Mediterranean uh, where Paul was ministering, if he was in jail, uh, it was probably under Roman uh, jurisdiction. And so he'd be real aware of how they dressed and would realize that uh, one of the first things they would put on would be a belt. And so Paul starts here, he calls it the belt of truth. And we really realize that once we have lost to somebody the veracity or truthfulness of who we are, it's really hard to get it back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so Paul says, make sure that uh, we have truth as part of our armor. Um, you know, somebody asks me sometimes, you know, he asks you, you know, do you remember what happened? Unless it's a very special day you know, uh, sometimes I can't tell you all I did yesterday. Uh, I just, you know, I, I live now. Uh, now is the time of living. Yesterday's gone, tomorrow never comes, I got today. And so, unless, like I said, something very special happens, 
No, I don't know what happened, you know, on, on January 3rd at some time, uh, one year, two years, 20 years away. But uh, we ought to, in what we do, be truthful. Mm -hmm. And uh, why I mentioned that about time is that I always have believed that a liar needs a terrific memory. You know, maybe that's why some of us, we just don't remember it, right, Jerome? You know, I mean, uh, sometimes I've got a good forgettery. And so, uh, uh, but a liar, I, I, you know, you got, you got to think about that. A liar has got to have a terrific memory because he has got to be able to somehow make his lie look like truth again and again and again. Yeah, where if you just live in truth, it's a lot easier. Amen? Amen. 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 So, we all need to put on truth. We need to put that belt of truth on. Well, uh, we, we see here that uh, that belt of truth... Uh, we have a truth that's built on the Father, the Son, the Spirit. Uh, we, you know, we have exchanged the truth of God for a lie. Uh, love and truth, uh, I believe, work together as you look at this. Uh, we are to be walking in truth. And what that means is every day be truthful. That's all that means. And the gospel and truth. Uh, the gospel, by the way, is truth. Yes. Yeah. Uh, when we carry that, we carry truth. Uh, and then uh, we're to rightly divide the word of truth, aren't we? Mm -hmm. And so I just wanted to emphasize that belt of truth because all of the armor that we have had, uh, the breastplate fits to it. Uh, we, we, we put on uh, the shoes, the helmet. We, we, we have a, a shield. And all of those things are offensive. They're all offensive. And then we have, as we had last week, the sword of the spirit, right? The sword of the spirit, our sixth one, which, uh, I'm sorry, the, those are defensive. The sword of the spirit is the offensive. We've come out of defense to offense. And I better not confuse you or you walk away and say, well, we got, you know, five offensive weapons and two defensive. It's no five defensive and two that are offensive. And so the defense has been given to us. Put, put the armor on. And then lastly, you have the sword that you put in its sheath to carry, to use. And uh, uh, we know that that uh, sword is going to be uh, the word of God. It says the sword of the spirit, which is what? Which is the word of God that we looked at last week. Well, I believe this communicator of prayer <laughs> Uh, is maybe both a defensive and an offensive weapon because uh, offensive in that if you're going to do anything with your offense of knowing what to do you, that contact with headquarters is imperative isn't it uh, so in an offensive way you don't know what to do without the communication from headquarters and that's the way it should be with us with our daily lives. Uh, we, we saw that everything starts with truth and then rolls down through. That truth is what we need uh, to hook the breastplate of righteousness to. And that's what the belt was for. The, the, the Romans had a way that they hooked the breastplate to that belt. Because uh, a flopping breastplate you know, when you're running along and the thing's going like this, uh, isn't much good, nor is it when you're fighting and the thing lifts up and the guy just puts a sword in you. 
And so it went over the shoulders, tied in the front, and I believe also went down and tied in the back. So this was just like part of your body. Those two worked in tandem. And then all those other defensive weapons you picked up accordingly. Last week, we saw that offensive weapon. And we do know that if we use the word of God rightly, the sword of the spirit, that it has tremendous impact. Yes, it does. Has tremendous impact in this world. Uh, Jim here, my brother, uh, love him in the Lord. I've known him in this church and in a church before, and uh, we probably have known each other longer than uh, uh, Moses, I guess. Uh, but because uh, we, we go way back to another church, and I know Jim's been here quite a while, and uh, I was at uh, uh, two other churches before I came here since I knew him. And uh, I'm glad to be back with him. He's a great man of God. Amen. Amen. And so, as we as we go down and we've seen all the armor, uh, specific, put it on. Some of it protects your head. Some of it's your heart. You know, and I, and I think often with the feet, you know, your shoes shod with preparation of the gospel of peace. If you hurt your foot, your whole body seems to ache. Uh, I had an Achilles heel for a while that just, I don't know if it was tendonitis back there or what, but, uh, you know, you, you couldn't walk right. It seems you couldn't even talk right. It just, uh, you know, it affected everything you did. And so uh, Paul realizes that, you know, he didn't leave out the feet. Uh, I always think it's interesting where the Bible says how beautiful are the feet of those that preach the gospel, that give out the word. Because uh, I don't know about your feet, mine aren't very beautiful. <laughs> and... Uh, and I was an old shoe salesman. I can tell you a lot of people got really ugly feet. <laughs> I'll, put my, I'll put myself through school doing some of that. And, uh, and, uh, but, uh, you know, Lord prepared for our feet, didn't he? Our spiritual feet. Because think about it. Our walk is more important than our talk often. Amen. And, uh, you know, some people can talk a good message, whatever, but uh, I want to see the walk. And Paul really emphasized through this book, we're going to take another look at it as we come to the close of it, uh, uh, probably uh, end up uh, near the end of January or February. Uh, but we're going to take a, one more look at some of those things, uh, as I like to call a flyover. Uh, you know, sometimes I'm, I'm when I get into such weeds and try to go as deep as I can that, uh, you know, it's the old saying, you know, you can't, can't see the forest from the trees. And uh, every once in a while, you'll find me backing out and just kind of fly over. Uh, take a look at it. But we have this uh, uh, communicator. And matter of fact, uh, I think when you watch some of these more secretive missions where it's not a big one, where you kind of know what the objective is. You've got a big army mass moving uh, towards a certain thing. Where the communicator comes in so importantly, I think is the smaller your group becomes, where it's a stealth mission, because something could change like this in that, and, the, and they're supposed to be going left and they go right, or they're supposed to be going back and they go forward. 
And so our communications, and I always tell you folks this, as we talk about prayer tonight, I always think I'm a poor prayer. Uh, uh, I just do. I, do. I think every day I get done with the day, I, uh, Lord, I don't seem to have done real good with prayer. And I don't know how you feel on that. And I, and my thought is, I guess, you know, as long as your heart's probed like that, uh, but I do find myself walking and praying. I find myself, when I go out and sit in the backyard and see God's creation, sitting there praying. Uh, and like I told you guys, and uh, some of you who are so anxious, when you get, you know, you know at a red light, you know, it's uh, almost a cosmic tragedy uh, to uh, try to wait, you know, sometimes uh, a minute, a minute and a half for a long one. Uh, pray, learn a verse. Truthfully, pray during that time. Don't shut your eyes or you'll hear horns behind you. Uh, and, uh, and if you're praying and driving, please keep them open. Uh, I, I've watched people do the strangest things driving. I've seen them have a book on the steering wheel. Uh, I've seen them have a tablet up there driving along, got a tablet and doing this and driving. Uh, uh, it just, you know, it's amazing the things people can find. Uh, I've watched ladies put their entire cosmetic thing on while they're, while they're driving, you know. Uh, and uh, if you're, you know, watching from behind or you're alongside, uh, you know, uh, I'm not saying they start out looking like a hag, but uh, <laughs> they, you know, uh, they, by the time they're done, their hair is combed and, uh, you know, eyebrows have been prepped and, uh, and they've all done this while they've drive, drive. So it's, you know, it's one of the, one of those things, but uh, we all need communication. And uh, sometimes I'm at fault too, where I, I don't sometimes think I wait long enough to hear an answer. Uh, that's why I think it's so important to study the word because God speaks to me a lot in his word. Yeah. Yeah. You know, because I think sometimes I shortcut prayer. I've got some things I pray uh, and uh, you know, you know, if God wants to speak to me, he really has to do it through the word because I haven't stopped to listen. I don't know how it is for you, but I'm just telling you, I, that's one area I said I have taught, I have preached, uh, you know, and it just is something that I've never been satisfied in and of myself uh, of prayer. And uh, I... I, I hope some of you have that sense that, uh, uh, you know, that sense where uh, we're at least in an attitude of prayer that whether we're praying that we're open to God, at least talking to us. Uh, prayer should be a two-way street. Uh, the communicator we're going to be talking about here uh, is a two-way street. Uh, those out on the field talk to headquarters and what those out in the field most want to hear is what headquarters has to say. <laughs> what headquarters has to say. And I really believe that, you know, God wants to talk and communicate to we the believers. That he has something for everyone in this room to do. And some of you say, well, I, I'm not a preacher. I, I don't speak well, you know. But, you know, the time, you know, I heard that one fellow, and I've lost his name, that gets up and says, I, I, they will do be with you tonight. And by the time he gets done with the message, I'm bawling. I am just crying. Uh, here's a fellow that, you know, that's, I mean, I, I, I'm not mocking him. That's just exactly how he sounds. Uh -huh. And I, if I ever hear him, I keep him on 
I just know I need a good cry. <laughs> because, you know, he, he will lay it on you. And, you know, somewhere he'd say, if I can uh, do this, y you can uh, do this. And, you know, by that time, you know, you're under the table. You just are. Uh, but we all need to communicate. And so uh, the communicator of prayer, uh, we're going to be looking at uh, our verses, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. That's uh, verse 18. If some of you are listening to this and wonder where I come up with, that's the seventh piece. I don't think the rest of the armor works well without the headquarters communicating. Yeah. And uh, I know I hear some really great preachers. I won't put names up. Where I hear them talk often about the six pieces of armor. Six pieces of armor. And I know that if they're going through that, usually they'll get to this verse on prayer and uh, tell of its importance. But I really think that communication with headquarters, with heaven, is important. And so I, I've gone ahead and listed this as number seven. Uh, you, you can make it 6B if you want from the sword of the spirit and uh, make this uh, part uh, 6B and, and call it six pieces. But uh, all of us need to be able to communicate uh, with, uh, with the Lord. Uh, we could have called this message uh, rather than the communicator of prayer, keeping in touch. Uh, I kind of like that. That's kind of folksy, keeping in touch. Uh, and you do, you, do you think the Lord would mind if we kept in touch? Uh, you know, I think the Lord would have a big smile if we kept in touch more. Yeah. Keeping in touch. So as we, as we look at this, our first one's types of prayers. Uh, I have a few of them here for you. And I'll go through them quickly and then uh, turn back. Uh, types of prayer. Confession. Profession, intercession, adoration, worship, thanksgiving. And you, you probably can find others you want, but I just thought this uh, uh, probably for our need here fits a bit. First is confession. Uh, that's kind of uh, uh, this idea of admitting that one is guilty. Confession, uh, admitting one's guilty. Profession uh, means, as it sounds, declare. Uh, we're declaring a truth or we're declaring something about ourselves or something uh, that we're involved in. Uh, it's a profession, a declaration uh, of the things that uh, we want. We're declaring it, that this is a need. Uh, intercession is uh, intervening on the behalf of someone else. Uh, to intercede, you hear the word there, don't you? Intercede, uh, somebody that gets in between something, right? Uh, and we think of that, you know, uh, two guys fighting and somebody intercedes, they get between them and, and uh, push them apart. Uh, we think of a lawyer uh, he intercedes between either the jury or the judge and his client. Intercedes. Uh, some, that's someone between. You remember that uh, Job said that uh, he wished he had someone between him and God? Mm -hmm. Someday, I, I keep saying this and I haven't done it. Job's questions are answered in Christ. Uh, I'm sure there's a book on it. I haven't found it, but uh, where Job said, if I just had someone 
who could touch me and touch God. You know, I think I was it a dazed man. He called it a dazed man, but it, it, we would call it a lawyer, uh, someone between, someone who could, you know, uh, intercede between them. Uh, we do have that. Yes. yes, the church has that. In fact, we have two of them. Not only is Christ interceding, but the Holy Spirit inside of us is interceding as well. Yes. It says with groans that we can't even understand. That's right. That's right. Uh, that he's on our behalf. We, we can't even understand how, how our needs are that he prays for us. <laughs> so we've had confession, profession, uh, intercession, adoration, of course, is a deep love or respect. I like a deep love because uh, uh, respect may be there, but I think it's beyond just a respect. Uh, worship, of course, is to express uh, a high sense of reverence. Uh, and uh, thanksgiving is being thankful for what we have. Those last two, uh, I, I'd just like to bring this out. We worship God for who he is. Thanksgiving, we worship him and thank him for what he's done. One is who he is, and one is for what he does for us. And he does plenty, doesn't he? Yeah. He does plenty. You know, I think of, you know, days would have been with the inoperable cancer I had. I wouldn't be talking to you tonight, three years later. I thank God for that. Uh, I praise him that uh, uh, in our day and age, uh, uh, we can get, you guys might want to pray for me that uh, I've had uh, someone pick that medicine up through CCI and uh, I've had it a couple of months uh, through Johnson and Johnson and they're swinging and uh, someone called Jensen and uh, waiting for them to get a hold of me and what they're going to need. Uh, but uh, I sure don't want to, or can't even, uh, want to pay six or seven thousand dollars a month uh, for for the uh, chemo that I take for a day. Uh, so uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, and if the Lord wants me home quick, I guess I won't get it. <laughs> of course, he he could take care of that too. He can take care of that too. But some of the types of prayer uh, that we have and uh, what, what it is and uh, what God wants to do. Uh, I, I think uh, uh, a daily bread I, I had says, how well do you pray? And uh, Luke 11, 1, is, uh, that's that verse, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. Uh, you know, the disciples uh, asked Jesus and uh, uh, they did not uh, say, Lord, teach us how to preach. I always thought it was interesting and I'll get back to this. Uh, Lord brought it to my mind, so I'm going to say it, the spirit, that when Joshua was fighting with his men, the Israelites, in the valley and Moses was up with his arms and as long remember the battle as long as he held the, his arms up they won yes. they were winning and as soon as his arms would begin to drop they they begin to be pushed back and so uh, a couple of uh, brothers uh, got and they held his arms up try that sometime just walk around with your arms up for a little bit yeah. You know, or pretend you're sitting on a chair and you don't really sit on it. You're holding yourself up. Uh, you'll have muscles you never knew you had. <laughs> but, you know, uh, it, it doesn't take long and your arms get really heavy. Yes. But I thought, here's, here they are down there with swords and the battle's going and, and sweat's coming and blood's flying all over and uh, they're going ahead. And the man that needs the help is the one praying. 
Tells you something, doesn't it? Yes. yes. The one praying up on the mountain needed the help. And I think we all need help each other in prayer. We do. Yeah. Yes. So uh, our types of prayer, but this daily bread teach us to pray. Uh, as it says to the disciples that Jesus did not say, Lord, teach us how to preach. It said they wanted to be shown how to intercede effectively and fruitfully. The occasion for their request was the example of the Savior himself. And uh, when Jesus had finished speaking to his heavenly Father, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. Jesus was always going away to pray. Yes. You'll read that. He was going on his own to pray. There was something about Christ when he prayed that impressed his followers. Uh, even, even when they fell asleep in the garden, uh, they knew that uh, he was doing battle. I think uh, uh, this story here says, if your pastor stood in the pulpit Sunday after Sunday, and repeated the same phrase, preached the same sermon over and over. Now, some, some people in the audience think we do. Yeah. And uh, we'll, come up, we'll come up and say, you know, in 1799, you preached that sermon. And I've always got the biggest kick at Christmas time where there is a limited number of verses. You can do different things with them. But always I took the whole month of December both Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday, and we did Christmas theme. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know how many jokers, you know, particularly, it was always the ones kind of a little bit ticked with you anyway. Uh, most of you folks may not know it here, but in most churches, you have about 30 or 40 percent that will follow you to the gates of hell. And uh, they believe and will follow. You've got another 30 that uh, uh, just do their thing. And then another 30 that just absolutely hope you leave. <laughs> and, uh, and, and that's true in a lot of churches. I think Jerome's uh, has uh, something that's unique here where I know there's very little of that third group. And uh, which, you know, is something. But the bigger your church gets, you just bet you're going to have opponents. Uh, I know, yeah. uh, having been a preacher behind the pulpit. And uh, it's just so interesting. And uh, they can say, well, we're just the devil's advocate. Well, go advocate somewhere else. <laughs> but... Uh, the Lord wants us to be behind our pastor, to pray for the pastor, to pray for those who are in leadership, uh, and, and to pray for those who are in need. And so here, here's this one, uh, and you're, it says your pastor preached the same sermon over and over. He would soon lose his congregation. Yet our prayers, listen now, we frequently do the very thing we get a little pattern. We get a little pattern. Uh, here he says, I remember a certain man who despised this truth, uh, true piety, uh, never had a fresh petition. I could repeat his prayer with him almost word for word. Uh, and I think, uh, as he says here, examine your life then make your earnest request to the Lord. And here's, a, I always like these uh, uh, poems. O oh, thou whom we come to God, the life, the truth, the way, the path of prayer thyself has trod, Lord, teach us how to pray. Yes. And the thought is, and I like these, more difficult to teach one man to pray than tend to preach. <laughs> uh, good thoughts there. Uh, there's times of prayer, I think. Uh, it says praying at all times in the Holy Spirit. Praying at all times in the Holy Spirit. Times, we, we pray in good times. 
And by the way, we probably pray less in good times than bad. Yeah. Is that interesting? Uh, pray in good times. Pray in bad times. Pray all the time. Uh, I think we can be in a sense of prayer. Yes. Uh, like I said, I'm never satisfied with myself. And I guess because I was taught, you know, you needed to bow and fold your hands and close your eyes. And But, uh, you know, we should know better that, you know, we can pray at, at any position. Yes. And eyes open, closed, yes. hands apart, hands up, hands down, bent over, raised up. Uh, so, and of course, uh, there's silent prayer. Uh, in times of prayer, and I, that would be personal, silent prayer, praying uh, without anyone hearing, mm -hmm. and we need to do. And then there's vocal prayers, that would be public, and uh, we all should be ready. It says, be instant in season and out of season, and uh, we all should have a prayer that we can give to the Lord. Now, I don't want it to be mechanical, uh, but I think if you just start doing it, it will become less mechanical. Uh, pray and know that God wants us to pray. Amen? Amen. He wants us to pray. And so uh, times of prayer, that uh, uh, good times, bad times, all the time, silent prayers, vocal prayers. And uh, I think that's uh, another daily bread on this one. Uh, down and more towards the base of it. Uh, this is another one that says, don't forget to pray. Uh, it comes from 1 Peter 4, 7, watch unto prayer, watch unto prayer. It was a Wednesday night and two members of the church had gone off on a fishing trip. Presently, one of them said, you know, we really shouldn't be here. We ought to be at prayer meeting. Uh, Roman and I might have snuck out and been some of those at times. Uh, we, we do love to fish. And uh, we were in a club for years together, fish smallmouth bass, and we would catch largemouth by accident. <laughs> but uh, said, you know, we really shouldn't be here. We ought to be in the prayer meeting. The other fellow replied, well, even if I were home, I couldn't go because my wife is sick. Yeah. <laughs> this is the guy out fishing. <laughs> and the question is, how faithful are you in your prayer life? And that's why I said I'd love to see you guys here in prayer meeting tonight. Mm -hmm. Have you got a lot of catching up to do? And the poem is, don't stop praying, but have more trust. Don't stop praying. For pray, prayer we must. Faith will banish a load of care. Don't stop praying. God answers prayer. Amen. Too many people pray only for emergency rations rather than asking for daily bread. <laughs> Good stuff. Thoughts of prayer. Uh, what are some of the thoughts? Uh, well, the first part of that out of uh, 18, it says, being on an alert, uh, be, a, be alert for all perseverance and supplication, being alert. Uh, being alert means not to be lazy, not to be sleeping, uh, be awake, know what's happening. Uh, perseverance means to be steadfast, to persist, my favorite ending when I end a lot of things I have, particularly with emails, I, I will add this at the end when I sign my name. Keep on, keeping on, Doc Overholt. Uh, that's what I'm talking about, perseverance. Steadfast, persistent. It's a, a continuance in a state of grace. And I like this, this is, this is from Webster's Dictionary. A continuance in a state of grace until succeeded by the state of glory. Perseverance. 
continue in a state of grace until succeeded by a state of glory. We, we all live by grace. By grace. So, as, as, as we look at this, uh, that sense uh, of uh, per perseverance, and then the other word, supplication, uh, that's to ask humbly, uh, earnestly. It's really kind of a petition for help. Ask humbly, ask earnestly, that petition for help. Uh, supplication can also be used to entreat someone in power to help or to give a favor. Supplication. <clears throat> Thoughts of prayer. Whatever they are, preserve. Continue to uh, be persistent. Perseverance. Supplication. Ask humbly. Don't come haughtily into God's presence. I always know when someone comes back that's fallen in the program and they're haughty and said, I'm ready, I've got this now, and I'm, I can expect two weeks are gone. It's only if they come back and say, Pastor, I'm so sorry. Uh, went out with a buddy and uh, got in the wrong place with the wrong people. And, uh, you know, one drink when you're an alcoholic is not one drink. <clears throat> it's not one drink. For some of them, it can start years back in dissipation. And so, but if they would come back humble and uh, realize what they had done, uh, I, I always gave them a higher grade. And some of them fell. But, uh, you know, if they came back the second time, third time, fourth time, there was one I came to the mission kind of uh, three strikes you're out. If, they don't, if you don't make it, and uh, I, it didn't take me long to get rid of that. I told you about the sheet with a hundred some names on it where they had done something wrong at the mission and they could never come back. I thought, what in the world? You know, pretty soon you shut everybody out and you can just sit there and twiddle your thumb. Nobody can come back, right? You know, so, and then lastly, uh, some of the topics of prayer. Uh, family, uh, in other words, personal, those around you. Uh, the church, Christian relationships. Behind that, to the, the community, those that are part of the area where you live and work. The world. Missionaries, those outside our sphere, uh, world leaders, world events. We need to be in prayer. And then just some verses I want to give you just to, just to close down here. Uh, put down uh, Matthew uh, 21-22. In all things you ask in prayer, believing you'll receive. Now, we know that it's not always what we ask for. You realize that, right? God, I believe God always answers prayer, but we think he only can say yes. If I pray, Lord, move this mountain, move this mountain, well, we know that that's hyperbole, right? That he, what he's talking about is the mountains that seem to be in our lives, not literal mountains, that we have mountains and giants to slay, but not literally. Uh, you know, we don't go out to the Rocky Mountains and ask the whole Rocky Mountains, you know, to drop into the sea. Some may want that because that would take care of California. <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, uh, it's not what it means. God says yes. He says no. He says wait. You hear that? Yes, no, wait. Some things you ask for, you will never get. Paul asked, he had, I think he had bad eyes from the time that he had the 
the uh, where he was blind, and it says when uh, the person laid hands on, it was like scales fell off his eyes. I believe not only did he have something wrong with his eyes, but that they looked bad. Uh, that he wasn't real pleasant to look at, whatever it was. It would, and, and sometimes I get a hint of that when he writes, see I, how big a print is what he's saying. How big a print I wrote this. Uh, something was wrong with his eyes, I believe. And I believe that may have been his thorn in the flesh that he prayed for. And... Uh, he finally realized that uh, three times he says, God's grace is sufficient. Mm -hmm. That what? He was never going to get rid of that. Something, <laughs> you know, uh, could God heal my cancer? Yes. Uh, but it's a type where probably not. You live with it. You thank him for every day you have. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, Romans 10.1 Brethren, my heart's desire and my prayer to God uh, for them is for their salvation. That's a good thing to pray for. Yes, uh, Romans 10.1 Romans 12.12 12. Rejoice in hope, be patient in affliction, be persistent in prayer. <laughs> good one, right? How about Philippians 1.4 Always praying with joy for all of you in every prayer. I hope when you pray for me, you pray in joy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think a positive person does better, feels better than someone who's negative. Yes. Yes. Uh, this one's a good one. Philippians... Uh, four six. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need, and thank Him for all He's done. Yes, that is a good one. Philippians four six, Colossians four two. Continue earnestly in prayer. Be vigilant in it with thanksgiving. With thanksgiving. First Peter four seven. But the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayers. That's good. The end is at hand. I really believe the end is at hand. And then Psalm 1914. I wanted to give you something out of the Old Testament. Let the words of my mouth. I used to close my sermons as a young preacher with this. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable unto thee, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And that word strength uh, is translated uh, translated in some other uh, different, uh, other than the King James. Uh, it reads this way, O Lord, where it says my strength, O Lord, my rock. My rock. It's a, it's a similar word. My strength, my rock. Remember Jesus said, build your house upon the, the rock. And the uh, meditation of my heart be acceptable unto thee, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Uh, that's, those are just some verses that I wanted to give you that prayer is important. Yes. And uh, those are just a few you could spend hours looking at prayers in the Bible. Good stuff. Lord, I thank you for tonight. I thank you for Midway Baptist Church. I thank you for a pastor that preaches the word. Uh, we thank you for Brother L that preached to us last week and the good message that touched our hearts. Uh, Lord, continue to minister. You've given us a church with people with great talent. And we ask, Lord, that we would use our talents and that we would use what you've given us because I really believe what is not used becomes unusable. And so, Lord, help our people to use the talent you've given them, to use the gifts you've given them, that they might be a blessing to us, to our church, to our community, and literally the world. We ask in Christ's name.
Amen. 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 Amen.